We'll now move on to the first assumption that we can use to make the no assumptions bound smaller, the monotone treatment response assumption. The idea with this assumption is to assume that treatment always helps. And this means that every individual treatment effect is non-negative. So the ITE lower bound comes up from A minus B to zero. Similarly, that means that we can raise the ATE lower bound up to zero as well. Even though this seems pretty obvious, we'll go through a proof of why this is the case. This is a general theme in this part of the lecture is to go through these proofs because they're so short and they give you an idea of how to do these. If you have a different assumption than the ones that we're covering, you can still get different bounds. And us just going through these short proofs should help you be able to do that. Just as we did with the no assumptions bound, and as we'll do with all the rest of the bounds, we start with the observational counterfactual decomposition. Then we're going to lower bound this. So we'll do this by considering this counterfactual quantity here. We know that the expected y1 is greater than or equal to the expected y0 because of the monotrone treatment response assumption. And then using consistency, we have that this term on the right of the inequality is just the expected value of y given t equals zero. And that gives us a lower bound on this counterfactual quantity in terms of an observational quantity. So let's go ahead and plug that in here. Now we want to lower bound this other counterfactual quantity, which has a negative sign in front of it. Again, the monotone treatment response assumption tells us this. Then if we multiply by negative signs, that flips the inequality, so we're just going to flop the terms. And finally, we can just use consistency on the term on the right-hand side again to get the negative expected value of y in the treatment group. And then we have a lower bound on this counterfactual quantity in terms of an observational quantity, so we can just plug this in. And that's our lower bound. So now we have that this term will cancel with this term, and this term will cancel with this term to give us zero. And again, the goal there wasn't necessarily just to prove this lower bound of zero, which is a bit obvious from the reasoning above the proof. The goal is more to see how we connect these assumptions to bounding in these proofs so that you can get your own bound, so that these bound derivations become pretty simple and stuff that you can do yourself. And we called this the non-negative monotone treatment response assumption because we could flip this inequality, which would then make the ITE not non-negative, but non-positive. And we'll see the non-positive monotone treatment response assumption shortly. Okay, so now that we have this bound, let's plug in the numbers from our running example. So here was the no assumptions bound. And now that we've made the non-negative monotone treatment response assumption, we have a new lower bound here. So we can use this lower bound of zero that we got from this additional assumption to make our interval a bit smaller. We can take this minus 0 0.17 and change it to zero. And we keep the upper bound that we got from the no assumptions upper bound. And here is the non-positive monotone treatment response assumption that I was just talking about. We've just flipped the inequality. This is where getting the treatment is always worse than not getting the treatment. So, for example, if the treatment is a gunshot wound, then you're probably always better off without getting shot. That would be an example of where this assumption is satisfied. You can see examples of where Mansky applied these assumptions and bounds in the corresponding section of the course book where we link to those papers. Anyway, so the non-positive monotone treatment response assumption implies that the ATE is upper bounded by zero. So plugging this into the running example, here's the no assumptions bound again in this running example. Now if we add the upper bound that we just got from the non-positive monotone treatment response assumption, then we get this new, much smaller interval. Okay, so this interval is only of length 0 0.17, much smaller than the trivial interval of length 2 that we saw, and even than the no assumptions interval of 1. We get this by adding the non-positive monotone treatment response assumption here. And I didn't prove the upper bound on the ATE here, 
like I proved it in the last slide. And that's the question that you have for the end of this section, which is given the non-positive monotone treatment response assumption, prove that inequality. The, the ATE is upper bounded by zero. We'll now cover another assumption and the corresponding bound that follows from it, the monotone treatment selection assumption. The monotone treatment selection assumption is that the treatment group's potential outcomes are better than the control groups. So the potential outcome Y1 is going to be better in the treatment group than in the control group. And similarly, the potential outcome Y0 is better in the treatment group than it is in the control group. You can think of this assumption as sort of positive self-selection where the units with the better outcomes, regardless of which treatment group they're in, are self-selecting into the treatment group. If we make the monotone treatment selection assumption, we get that the ATE is bounded from above by the associational difference. So that's just this naive difference here. That is an upper bound on the ATE when we have the monotone treatment selection assumption. And rather than walking through this proof, I'll just give it to you. So the next question is to just prove the above monotone treatment selection upper bound. So go ahead and pause here to try that out. And here is the running example again. Recall the no assumptions interval that we get if we plug these numbers into that. And here is the monotone treatment selection upper bound that we just saw on the previous slide. So if we take this MTS upper bound and the no assumptions lower bound, we combine them, then we can get this interval. So here we just took the no assumptions lower bound and used it. And then we get this 0.7 from subtracting these two, from getting this naive difference. And the naive difference is 0.9 minus 0.2 equals 0.7. So that's what we get if we make the monotone treatment selection assumption, but we could also make the monotone treatment response assumption in addition to the monotone treatment selection assumption. And if we do that, we get this interval. So by combining these two assumptions, we've been able to say that the ATE must be between 0 and 0 0.7. Note that all of the intervals on the slide still contain 0. In other words, these bounds don't identify the sign of the average treatment effect. We'll soon see bounds that do in the optimal treatment selection section, which is what we have just arrived at.